people are always under the impression that my happiness lies in what I don't have. You know, that always, you know, that idea of if only I could get that. If only this would happen to me, then I'll be happy. If only this would go this way, I'd be happy. So there's always that conditional if, right? And, and basing our existence on that if only kind of mindset, right? And remember we said that um, rida is what? As Ibn al-Qayyim said, rida huwa sukoon al-qalb an qadimi ikhtiyar illahi lil-abd. We said that rida is the heart being tranquil in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen for the servant 50,000 years before our existence, right? Number seven is that you have husn al billah, meaning what? Thinking well of Allah, thinking well of Allah, um, because those who don't have content often are resentful of Allah's choices for them. Um, subhanAllah, husn al meaning always giving Allah that benefit of doubt. Even if things look really bad and they're hurting you and you always have to say, you know what, subhanAllah, Allah knows best. Allah knows best. Um, and uh, this is very dangerous, this concept of being uh, resentful of Allah. For example, you invest some money in a business, right? And you lose the money and you say, Allah, why? This money, this is halal money. That I worked very hard for. Why did you not help me? So you objecting to Allah like that. You are objecting to Allah like that implies an accusation to Allah that he wasn't fair. There's an implied accusation of that why Allah, this money is halal. Why are you taking it away? Why did I have to lose it? There is this implied whether you're doing it intentionally or unintentionally. And most of the time. My dear brothers and sisters, I know we do this unintentionally. Ibn al-Qayyim, uh, rahimahullah, says that the servant who always gives that benefit of doubt to Allah's choices will always be in a state of balance. Remember when I said to you, rida is istiwa al-halat, meaning uh, being one in all states. Remember we said this in the previous lectures, rida is being one in all states. So Ibn al-Qayyim, Say, says that you thinking good thoughts of Allah, always thinking good thoughts of Allah's choices, will actually compel you to be in the, will actually compel your, your ego and yourself to always be in this one state. Meaning that Allah takes, I'm okay. Allah, Allah gives, I'm okay. I don't change. My heart status doesn't change. Number eight. أَنْ يَعْلَمْ إِنَّ حَظَّهُ مِنَ الْمَقْدُورِ مَا يَتَلَقَّاهُ بِهِ this means, what? This means the, is that you have to understand that if you are content, then Allah will be content with you. If you are resentful, Allah is going to resent you. And this is also actualized in the hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Sahih Al-Tirmidhi where Prophet Muhammad says, مَنْ رَضِيَ فَلَهُ, الس- فله الرضا وَمَنْ سَخَطَ فَلَهُ عَلَيْهِ السخط. Whoever is pleased and accepting, Allah is pleased and accept, upset, accepting of him. And whoever is resentful and, 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 and objects, right? Allah will also pour down on his head objection and resentfulness. Uh, Ibn al-Qayyim wrote uh, the, a book called Tariq al-Hijratain, The Path to the Two Migrations. In Tariq al-Hijratain, Ibn al-Qayyim in the very beginning of the book, he says... He says something very interesting. And this is again, he's teaching us how to cultivate this mindset of when Allah takes, how, like, what my outlook should be. He says in the very beginning, he says, What does this mean? He says the servant is owned. Meaning I am owned. I am owned by who? By my maker, by Allah. I am owned, but I'm also tested, right, by the impression of being the owner. Because I'm on this earth, I own my house. I own my car. I own this. I own my this, right? But I, I, this is the test, you see, that, that this impression that eludes us 
Allah, he, so he's saying that the human being is tested. He's, a, he's, a, he's somebody who's owned. So you yourself are a possession, right? You're a possession, but you have the impression that you're the owner and the master of your universe, the master of your existence, of your situation, but you're not. See, Ibn Qayyim says that you, it's just an, a, a projection, a false projection that Allah does to test you. The servant is owned and tested by the impression of being the owner, right? It seems like this car is yours, but you and your car are owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The car isn't something you own, but it's something you are tested with to see what it is that you're going to do with it, right? And this is again, not me saying this, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying this in Surah An-Nur, verse number 33, Allah says, and give them from the wealth of Allah which He has given you. See, Allah says, give them from the wealth that's mine that I have given you. Give. So it's the wealth of Allah. Whatever you have, it's Allah's. Everything, I mean, something you should always like write out on a piece of like paper and put it up on your fridge. This 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 these words. Everything is on loan. Everything, including yourself. You understand? Everything is on loan. So just like even, even you, you're on loan. So what you do, what you put into your body, what you do with your body, right? It's on loan. So, you know, just like you lease a car, you're not going to go and mess it up because you know that you're going to have to take it back to the dealership. And if, if the car is like major messed up, you're going to have to pay in the end, right? So no, everything is on loan. Everything. You, your cars, your wealth, your, your children, your possessions. Everything is on loan. 